Hi there, all my ESU8 friends. I'm so excited to share with you today about one of Apple's latest apps called Clips. This is a fun way to build an expressive story, and I hope that you can ag agree with me that it's so simple to use that anyone could pick it up and use it tomorrow. So let's get started. Let's watch this introduction video from fellow educators seeing what's possible with Apple's Clips app. Hey everybody, welcome to my classroom. We're headed on a trip to Science World today in Vancouver, BC. Let's go. So first we'll visit the App Store and search for the app called Clips. It is free. It's only available for iOS devices. And when we read the prior prerequisites, we can see the devices that are supported require iOS 10.3 or later and the list of compatible devices is below. From here, install it. We'll open it up and see what it can do. To get started with the Clips app, let's launch it from my home screen. It's the icon down in the bottom right hand corner right now. When I tap it to open it, you'll notice that it's right away ready to record. It's ready for instant capture. And my three modes of capturing are across the bottom middle of my app. I can take a photo, a video, or pull up something from my camera roll, my library. With each of the photo or the video tools, you can flip the camera around to be front facing or rear facing. One thing that's different that is that instead of just pressing that red record button once to turn it on, you'll actually hold it down the entire time you want to capture, like this. Welcome to my video introducing the Clips app. So I held down that red record button the whole time that I wanted to capture and it shows up now as my clip down in my camera roll, my project roll. The same is true with the still photo. In this example I'll pull one in from my my library here and when I, before I actually have added it to my project, I can pinch and zoom and move it around so I can position it in different ways on my screen. And then to add it to my project, I again have to press and hold that red record button like this. You'll see the counter across the top middle is seeing, showing me how many seconds I've captured this image for. And now it shows down in my project across the bottom. I can trim my clips um, by tapping on them once and then using the scissors icon to maybe cut off the end or the beginning and the same with a still photo. And I can also mute the audio or delete the clip entirely. So there are some simple editing tools, but truly that is not what the Clips app was intended for. Um, the Clips app was intended for the, the quick and easy instant sharing of media. So not a lot of pre-planning and not a lot of editing. Um, and really the power in my mind lies in the features running across the top of my Clips app. And we're going to start with Live Titles. So Live Titles is the icon that has a speech bubble with lines running through it. And when I choose that icon, I'm now selecting what style of Live Titles I might want to use. You can see different color schemes and formats of that text. And basically it's just going to pick up anything that I say as long as I'm connected to the internet and print those words across my screen. Thus, they're called live titles. Um, what's really powerful about it is it's timed perfectly with how I say things too. So if I pause, it pauses and vice versa. 
I'm going to choose a style of, of live titles here where the text is running across the bottom. And I'm going to go get a picture that will show my office window here currently. And now I'll show you how I record and it picks up my text and puts it on the screen as a live title. So I'm going to press and hold that red record button. Welcome to my new office this year in downtown Neely. Now you'll notice I let up before it had finished typing all of my live titles and it probably made some mistakes too. But don't worry about that. You can tap on your clip that you've already added to your project and using the first button in the editing tools, the one with the horizontal lines on it, you can pull up what it thought was to be the captions. Um, Welcome to my new office this year in downtown Neely. You can add that in, even add it end punctuation, hit apply, and let's play it back. Now, on that clip, you can mute the audio, you can mute the original audio, or you can turn off those live titles even after you've recorded them by selecting none, or you can change their style. Um, it's just all saved within that clip. So the, the option or the capability of turning parts on and off is pretty powerful. Also, this is kind of um, an advanced fun thing, but you can definitely um, take out certain words and leave others in there. So if I just leave in the words new office this year, it will wait until that point comes in the video and then show those live titles at that moment. And it deletes the others. So it's pretty fun to um, think about the dictation possibilities while using live titles and clips. One other capability of the Clips app is just to use the different filters that are available inside of the um, second feature here, which is filters. This just gives you some color schemes, um, comic book type look, and also using some of the interactives that come with it. There's several menus so you can swipe through and see some of the emojis that are available. You can position them wherever you want on your screen. And we call these overlays and they do have um, the, the ability to change some of the text. It's called smart text. So for example here, we could put this one, this overlay in the middle here and if we didn't want it to say the date, we could say welcome or any other text that we wanted to um, work within that overlay. Now you're not able to um, edit the font size or the color of the, the text behind it. So you do have some limitations. I'll turn the live titles off. But you'll notice that, here, let me add one more that might have some animation here, that when you um, capture this clip, they will have a little bit of animation to them. So I'll press and hold to add this photo now, and you'll see how they kind of animate themselves into your screen and add a little bit of life to your project. So that makes them pretty fun. The final button across the top of my Clips app is one to create a poster. And these posters are some preset title slides, basically, where, again, you can change the text, but you can't edit the style too much. So here I'll just select the poster image that I want to customize and then change the text to whatever I want to say. When I hold to record this clip in, you'll see the little bit of animation that comes with it. And I can even add some of those overlays on top. So again, there we go. Every time I add a new clip to my clips project, it always goes to the end, but I can easily press and hold and drag it into a new position. So maybe I want to introduce my project with that first clip. So I just move it to the beginning and proceed to make my way through that project. I can also delete clips by tapping the trash can and easily um, add some small editing to this. Um, I do have one kind of tip that I encourage you to try that in my mind really elevates clips um, to something more powerful than just a slideshow creator. And that's if you take an image from your library that's a panorama image. 
let's use a shot that I know was wide enough to really showcase what this feature can do. Here's an example of an image that is too wide to fit onto the square aspect ratio that Clips requires us to use. So um, we're going to lock the record button into recording mode by again pressing and dragging to the right and while it's locked in record mode I just take my finger and just pan it across that panoramic image. Now you can see it was a little bit choppy but the power of clips is that when I play this back it smooths it out and it really makes it feel like a natural um, flow to that panoramic image. Same thing with pinching and zooming. I could take an image and let's zoom in on it and see what's happening here. So I'll lock the record button into record mode and then pinch and zoom and take a look at the Lego pieces here. Tap to stop and we'll watch it back and you'll see that Clips does a nice job of smoothing out that motion and kind of um, highlighting the part of the, the image that I want to showcase. So there's some great capabilities in here, but yet it's so simple that anybody can use it very easily, including our youngest learners. Um, and the sharing capabilities are vast. So down on the bottom right hand um, portion of my Clips app, there are the different places that I can export this video to. More importantly, I can save my video to the camera roll at any time and then do what with it whatever I want. But one feature that I definitely want to try um, before I get ready to export it is in the top right hand corner and it's the music note icon. Now when I go into here I can find some soundtracks that have already been created and that are already um, completely free and clear for me to use in my project and they don't have any words so they make them great for background music. Even better than that they are um, going to customize and, and match themselves to my project. So if I select one of these, it's going to take my project and analyze it and then time the music to match my video perfectly. It'll make the music get quieter when my voice is in there and um, bring up the sound when my voice is not. It'll end when it needs to end or speed it up if it if it is running out of time um, or vice versa, slow it down if, if you need more duration. So it's pretty powerful that you don't have to go create your own music and that these are all available as soundtracks to play with the project. Now if I hit play you'll see that that music plays in the background and it's all um, kind of professionally done for me without a little without little hassle at all. So one final thing here, underneath my drop down arrow in the top left hand corner of the Clips app, it does show other Clips projects that are time and date stamped so that you can come back to them and edit them later on. But like I said, when you are finished, just use that share arrow, save it to your camera roll, and from there you can do whatever you would like with your Clips project. So hopefully I've shown that that's simple enough to use. Now let's talk about some educational uses for the classroom. Now I'd love to share with you a lesson idea, teaching vocabulary with the Clips app. Are you looking for a great vocabulary building activity? One that helps students practice point of view and perspective writing? This is a simple one class period challenge that students can complete entirely in the Clips app. First, capture a tightly framed photo of your desired object. Second, zoom in as far as you can go. Next, write your clues. Finally, zoom out to reveal your answer. Can you guess these zoom clues? Besides teaching vocabulary in any language, how about having students create Zoom clues of book covers, or geometric shapes, or geographic locations, 
or even historical figures. This Clipspiration idea was made in Clips by Katie Morrow. Another great way to find inspiration for what you can possibly do with the Clips app is just to search the hashtag Classroom Clips on Twitter. Here you can see in the search results, there are hundreds of examples and ideas all focused on Apple's Clips app. Some of them come from kindergarten all the way through lesson ideas for teachers to things like getting to know you, um, a lot of tech tips so that students and teachers alike can learn about technology through the clips projects people have created. Here's one introducing screen recording in iOS 11. As we scroll through these, you should be able to gain lots of ideas and examples to show both your fellow educators and the students in your class. Um, I know that many educators like to use the Clips app for weekly newsletter or uh, parent messages. Another great use is a book talk using the Clips app where students take pictures of the book's pages and then use the interactives and stickers and um, posters to talk about what they're reading about and share that as a Clips video. Another great use that I've seen is um, being able to demonstrate understanding of whatever they're learning about in class, whether it be a math problem or a science experiment, Just giving students access to that camera and letting them share their story. The simplicity of the Clips app, like I've mentioned before, along with the mobility and portability of being able to on the fly create a finished product that can be then shared easily um, with a variety of audiences makes it very um, applicable to educational settings. So I do, I do encourage you to scroll through this on your own and look for examples of clips that you can pull into your classroom um, and don't stop there. Get ideas for clips on your own turf, share them out with the rest of us, and if you ever want an extra set of hands, don't hesitate to holler to us at ESU8. The crust is made of rock and can vary between 7 and 50 kilometers thick in places. It is broken into sections called tectonic plates. The crust floats on the mantle, which has an approximate depth of 3,000 kilometers. It is made of semi-molten rock and molten rock known as magma. Temperatures in the mantle vary between 500 and 900 degrees Celsius at the surface and 4,000 degrees Celsius closer to the core. When he takes us to the park, Uncle Robert tells us, If you catch a dandelion puff, you can make a wish. Anything you want will come true. As we chase the feathery wishes around swings beneath sliding board. Until we can hold them in our hands, close our eyes tight, whisper our dreams. Then set it floating out into the universe. Hoping each thing we wish for will one day come true.